Hello, welcome back. So we have another project for the LeBlonde today. And um, up next is collets. Uh, I wanna get collets working in that machine. So um, I have this draw tube here and this actually comes from a South Bend, a 16 inch South Bend. It is really, really close to being the right length to work for the LeBlanc. Um, but right now with this shoulder, it's just a little bit short. Also, I, I don't like what's going on back here. So when you try to tighten this thing, uh, when it's in the machine and, and it has a collet, this shoulder here just kind of sits flush against the back of the spindle. So as you're tighten it, tightening it against the spindle, it's, it's just kind of rubbing, which I think is a little weird. And two, because it's just this hard shoulder here, um, it doesn't center itself up in the spindle. So it just kind of tightens against this, the spindle and then it can kind of like wander and be out of balance, which really isn't ideal. And um, it isn't how these usually work. Um, I have one of these for my South Bend Heavy 10 and it has like a taper here. And that allows it to center up in the spindle as you tighten it. And that taper is on a separate kind of sleeve that spins independent of this tube here. So what I wanna do is adapt this to have a similar system um, and be the correct length to work for the LeBlanc. In order to do that, I have drawn up a little set of plans here. Um, I hope, I think you can see that. I can't actually see what you're seeing. But this is it. It's pretty simple. And um, I think kind of as you can see that, so the draw bar will go through this hole here. And this whole thing will sit around the draw bar. It's an inch and a half in length. This is uh, just a taper. This is really not important. It just needs to be able to help it center up inside the spindle as you tighten it. And then this whole thing spins independent of the tube here. So this is what we're gonna be making. First, we're gonna have to do some modifications to this, uh, mainly cut this shoulder out completely. And um, yeah, go from there. So let's grab a chunk of material and I will see you with the lathe. All right, so for this bit, I have this chunk of 4140 pre-hard. I think it should be a good material for uh, what we're doing. Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll find out. And um, nothing left to do but get to it. Okay, so first things first, of course, going to face the part and put a hole for a center. There's quite a bit of stick out, 
so of course we want to support this because we're going to be turning down um, a decent uh, diameter for uh, this first major diameter which um, is of course uh, this is the two inch diameter we have to turn down first that's uh, the diameter of that the back shoulder of the part and uh, so yeah we'll just knock that out and leaving just a little bit of extra because um, we're actually going to cut this off on the bandsaw and then bring it back to the lathe and just face the back side to bring it to length so that's what we're doing here now And these last couple passes, I was experimenting, trying to make sure that uh, on my last pass I would get a decent finish. And um, actually ended up changing inserts, and um, I think I ended up with a, a decent, halfway decent finish. Not as nice as, uh, you know, maybe I would have liked, but it was alright. So just setting up, um, setting up the uh, the carriage stop here using a uh, one two three block. This front section that um, kind of goes up to that shoulder is uh, one inch in length. So we're just using the uh, carriage stop so that we can get a nice crisp shoulder. And then just feeding all the way to that carriage stop, facing out, and then dropping a chamfer on that uh, outside corner there. And now taking the part out and just chopping it off in the bandsaw. And uh, back to the lathe, you'll notice we're using a three jaw chuck for this whole thing. Um, and this is just throwing it in the chuck just to show that it is, uh, it's it's plenty accurate enough for what this part's going to be. It's not perfect, but it's within a couple thou, which is, you know, plenty for this part. And so now just facing off that, that backside and bringing the entire part to final length here. And now we are just getting the starter hole and we're going to start drilling out this bore. I am using coolant here. Um, I do have coolant on this lathe because it's capable of using some, um, I can do some drilling with some bigger drills and the coolant really does help a lot with that. Um, however, it's, it's just such a mess and every time I use it, it's you know I just I end up spending as much time cleaning it up as I do on whatever operation I'm using it for so I, I try and use it sparingly but it really does do a good job when you need it and uh, so now we're just boring that hole out to its final dimension um, you will see I think coming up here in a second the boring bar that I'm using changes. I, I ended up going through a couple boring bars during this process. Things started out and they were going really well with this bar and then I started getting some chatter as um, the hole got bigger and uh, I, did, I did struggle with some chatter towards the end here. I think maybe I was going a little too fast. Maybe I should have slowed it down more. Uh, you know, I did slow it down as the hole got bigger but I'm thinking maybe I just didn't slow it down enough. And now just dropping a couple chamfers, of course, on those two new corners, edges that we created. Now I'm just using uh, parallels to flip it around and, and get it square-ish, square-ish in the chuck. This works pretty well. Um, it gets it plenty square for, again, what we're doing here. And... Um, it's, you know, it's it's quick and it's easy, and uh, it worked out well for me here, so. And that's just showing that uh, it's running, you know, pretty concentric, just using those parallels and sticking it back in the chuck. You can see it's not perfect, but again, it's it's plenty fine for what we're doing. And uh, the whole point of this, really, all that we're doing here is just putting that um, putting that bevel or that really big chamfer on the end that uh, interfaces with the back of the spindle. And this is what's going to help it to center up in the spindle 
when we tighten it against the spindle. All right, let's take a quick moment to recap where we are at this point. Uh, really, we have finished all of the major features of our part, right? I mean, if we put it against the drawing, that's our part. You know, like it'll do what it has been designed to do, just as it is. Um, however, if I put it together, I'll show you what needs to be made next, and you'll see why. So I've got um, I've got this little thrust washer here. This is really not necessary. Um, however, I do think that it'll make it a little bit nicer when tightening it by hand, and it will let you get a little bit more torque without having to break out the wrench. So that goes on, and then this guy goes on, right? And this sits against that, and it spins nice against the back of the handle. Um, provides the space you need, tightens against the back of the spindle, and tightens your collet. Awesome, right? However, here's the problem, right? So there's nothing holding it on to the draw tube. So what we're gonna do next is make the retention system that will hold that on the draw tube, but will also allow for us to take it on and off um, in case I want to change the length, if I have a different lathe I want to use it on, or whatever, right? It, it's um, going to be a system that will allow for a quick removal for whatever reason. And here's how it's going to work. These three holes here are going to be drilled and tapped for a small ball bearing. A little spring which you probably can't even see on camera there it is and a set screw right the ball bearing will drop into the little hole the spring will then drop in right behind it and the set screw will be tightened against both to provide tension against the spring which provides tension against the ball bearing then in our draw tube, we will cut a corresponding round groove for those ball bearings to ride in. Here's the tool that we've ground to do that. And so it's gonna work, you know, really similar to, you know, like the spring and ball bearing that holds um, like a socket on the ratchet handle. A lot of ratchet handles have that little ball bearing you stick it on and it clips in and that lets the socket not fall off but if you pull on it it'll pop right off you can overcome that spring tension and it'll come off so that is the same idea that we are going to be making here using these three holes and um, yeah we'll move over to the mill to do that and then then we will be finished okay we are set up at the mill ready to drill some holes we will be holding the parts in this Chinese dividing head. Um, we're not actually going to be using the dividing feature of this. We're just going to be using the direct indexing, which is this plate right here. We will be going to every 120 degrees, which will give us three holes around the outside of the part. We're just going to use this edge finder here to find the center of our part and then the middle of this face here. So touch off on either side, divide it in half to find the center, and then touch off on this face and use that to find the middle of this surface. So it should be pretty straightforward, which means I guess we have nothing left to do but get it done. So let's go.
Alright, so, um, of course starting off with the spot drill. This is a round surface, so the spot drill just uh, does a good job to help make sure that the drill stays on course where it's supposed to be on that round surface and doesn't wander everywhere. You are going to find, if you pay attention to this kind of whole drilling section, that the editing is a little bit choppy here. I actually ended up, somehow I lost a bunch of footage and the footage that I did get it was kind of all over the place and it was a lot of short sections I'm not really sure what happened um, but yeah I, I did my best to try and edit it together in a way that sort of makes sense so I hope that it comes out you know you, you can at least tell that I'm drilling three holes so I guess that's really about as good as I can get out of it but yeah, that's why, if you notice, it's a little bit weird and uh, kind of feels like it jumps all over the place a little bit. Uh, that's, that's why, because it does jump all over the place a little bit. Alright, so now that those are done, the last thing to do is to just tap those three holes. I'm not going to bother putting in a bunch of footage of me hand tapping a bunch of holes. Uh, I will say though that I did manage to break one tap during this process. Turns out that this 4140 is uh, pretty tough stuff. And if you get a little overzealous, it is not hard to break a tap off in this stuff. So I did manage to do that. But at the end, all three holes got tapped, and they all work, so that's what matters. And uh, yeah, that's it. And um, this is almost finished. Well, after all that, it's apparently using a tap that got the better of me. So, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> um, apparently, tapping these holes was uh, significantly more difficult than I had anticipated. As you can see, you know, these two look fine, but this monstrosity is just all hacked up. This is uh, the one that I broke the tap off in, so that's fantastic. On the upshot, though, the set screws do fit, and they do thread into all three holes. This one's a little wobbly to start, but it does go in there, so that's good. Also gets a little tight, but it will go in. So that's good. Um, which means we only have one thing left to do. Well, let's see if this thing goes together, shall we? Okay, got you a little bit of a wider shot here. Um, I think this is gonna work. The spacer, see it stays on, but if I pull really hard, I can pop it out of that groove. Yeah, I think this is good to go. Pretty happy with this. Let's see if I can get you a better look at it. Might have to Shorten these uh, set screws a little bit just so they don't stick out as much, but Yeah, that works pretty good. It works how I thought it would <laughs> which is honestly a slight surprise So um, I guess that's one more project down I uh, now have the ability to use collets on the big LeBlanc, so pretty stoked about that 
Um, yeah, as always, thank you so much for coming along for the ride, especially if you stayed this long. Um, I appreciate each and every person who watches these videos. If you have any suggestions for anything having to do with these videos, whether it's for the machining or the videos themselves, um, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I am always open to help, uh, criticism, um, you know, absolutely any information that anybody has that they feel like they want to provide is welcome. So again, thank you so very, very much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.